Hey everybody, Omar here, the ninth of the party. I'm back with part two of my South African knife collection, sort of like an, an update. Again, we're not going to be talking about anything specific about these knives. I'm just going to go over all the knives that I have, the materials that are on them, and who made the knife, and that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I've already made videos on all these knives. I just wanted to bring out the whole collection and and show you what I have as a whole. So let's go ahead and get started. This one is the Andre Van Heerden, uh, Andre Thorburn collaboration. Um, A2 knives, A9 in uh, lightning strike carbon fiber with uh, copper ingrained in the, in the uh, carbon fiber. This is a one-of-a-kind handmade knife. We've got a backspacer of carbon fiber, blue liners on there, the proprietary uh, gray rustic looking uh, pocket clip. Uh, again, Nitro 77 steel, a rare steel to use. Uh, this steel is just really difficult to treat. Uh, goes through an amazing um, heat treatment process again, and then it is dipped in liquid nitrogen four times. So only the really experienced uh, South African knife makers even bother to work with it. Uh, but for those that do work with it, it's a real sense of pride because they know that that is an art form to get the steel to be that sharp uh, in that raw form and then turn it into a knife that's almost as powerful as, say, M390, maybe even better. This one is the... Um... Oh, God. The J.D. Van Deventer um, Midi, Midi Knife uh, in blue carbon fiber twill and black marble carbon fiber. Uh, we have a zirconium pocket clip with a carbon fiber backspacer. I love this knife because it is wicked smooth on just regular tool steel ball bearings. That is one of the talents of um, J.D. Van Deventer is he nails his smoothness. I mean, it's just incredible on regular tool steel ball bearings. M390 blade, by the way, in case I forgot to mention that. Really nice drop point blade we have there. Really beautiful. This knife comes in three different sizes. It comes in the standard, which is 3.6 inches. It comes in this size, which is the midi. Uh, medium, uh, so the MIDI standard, the MIDI medium, and the MINI MINI, the MIDI MINI, sorry, uh, which is even smaller than this one, but this one is 3.3 uh, 3 inch blade. The smaller one, I believe, is like 2.75 inch blade on that one. Um, this one is the Trevor Burger Lex K. Um, again, a really great piece. I've been after this knife for a long, long time. Um, probably the only thing that's disappointing about the knife is the aesthetics. I mean, it's just one slab of carbon fiber on the front. Um, and there's really not much eye candy. We've got a nice blue uh, titanium pocket clip, uh, blue titanium um, backspacer. For uh, Trevor Berger, uh, he doesn't really do a lot of, like, custom orders. In fact, in the last few years, he doesn't do custom orders at all. What he does, he just... Puts out maybe 10 knives randomly. You don't know what they are. They may be liner locks. They may be um, uh, frame locks, whatever. Could be a Lex K. Could be a, you know, an EXK. You don't know what he's putting out. But once he puts it out there, it's your choice to buy it or not. He doesn't do custom orders, or he very rarely does uh, custom orders. In fact, you know, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't. I haven't been able to get a hold of him to get to, get, to make me a custom um, EXK, but you know, for now, this is good enough. This will do, um, and I am very happy with this piece. It's a fantastic knife. Moving on, we have the Rucus Blumeris. Um, I believe this is called the L L fifteen flipper piece in with Damascus Damascus bolsters and. Uh, marble carbon fiber. Uh, we have a gray titanium pocket clip with a 
gray blue ceramic ball on the um, on the pot clip to help it kind of you know stay in in your pants. We've got a um, carbon fiber backspacer, M390 blade, wicked smooth on um, regular ball bearings. This knife is quite heavy. It's a heavy sucker, but you know, I still love it. I don't care that it's heavy. Uh, I don't even know what it weighs, but yeah, it's got some serious heft to it, some serious weight to it. Uh, it's almost or practically a full dress piece, and I love it. I love it. The um, the Damascus bolsters really stand out on this, and it's a nice combination between the two. So, had to have that one. This one is very well known in the custom world um, for anyone that, that knows Andre Thorburn's work. Uh, this is kind of like considered Andre Thorburn's zero tolerance knife, 0562, if you will. Um, we have here the L Compact uh, Flipper in blue carbon fiber twill. I don't know how many of these he made, but this is not a one of a kind. Um, I forgot to mention, this is a one-of-a-kind, that's a one-of-a-kind, this is not, that is, and this is not a one-of-a-kind. He probably made maybe about 50 of these in this exact configuration, I'm guessing, where it's all blue. That's why I had to have it. Blue's my favorite color. Uh, blue Carbon Fiber 12, again, he's very famous for his um, file work that he does on it by hand, that he does on all of his knives. Um... I don't know anybody that, that, ha, that has not bought a knife just based on that. Uh, that is a real time-consuming thing to do. The, uh, you know, filing that stuff down by hand. So you want to kind of think about that. Uh, he also makes this in a larger L51 flipper. So this is the L Compact. 51 flipper. He's also got a larger version. I believe that's 3.5 inches, I believe. This one's 3.1. Sort of a smaller version. This is uh, definitely a star in my collection. This is the Death's Horn Shintensen front flipper. Uh, in Damascus, this is another one of these um, full dress pieces. This one is in uh, Damascus blade, Damascus bol bolster. We've got uh, carbon fiber handles and a ceramic uh, ball release, which is real nice. Uh, very, very smooth, again, only on washers. And I just, when I saw this, I had to have it. Uh, it's just a fantastic knife. Again, this is a full dress piece. Even the backspacer, though you can't see it, uh, it's Damascus. Again, Death Swan's pretty good with the file work himself. He's right up there with Andre Thorburn. Uh, and the two of them are actually good friends, which is kind of fun to know. Um, they actually hang out together, believe it or not. Um, yeah, so it's really kind of cool. I love this piece. Um, he doesn't do any pocket clips, I forgot to mention. Uh, he gives you a nice ostrich slip with the knife. Also wanted to mention, this knife is actually inspired by the 1990 bullet trains he saw in Japan at that time. It looks like a train. If you hold it up at this angle, you can see this looks like the swoop of a bullet train. Um, so that's basically what inspired him to make this knife. I thought that was kind of important to mention in case I forgot to mention that. We've got the, uh, Trevor Burger. Oh, I'm gone. I don't remember the name of this one. Um, Atlas Flipper. Thank you. Trevor Burger Atlas Flipper. Uh, in, um, Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber Slab and Titanium on the other side. This one I like a lot just because it's a half and half deal. You know, you got carbon fiber on one side, titanium on the other. That's just nuts. And then you've got the uh, blue titanium uh, pocket clip and a carbon fiber backspacer. Really nice knife. The blade is M390, in case you're wondering. So yeah, this one I don't think is gonna go, uh, gonna leave my collection at all. I like this one. Uh, this one might leave. In fact, I'm definitely seriously considering it. This is White G10, made by Arucas Blumeris. The model number on this one is the, 
Oh, God. L06 front flipper. I actually have two of these. You'll see the second one in a few seconds here. Uh, this one's got an M390 blade. Yeah, again, the material is G10, white G10. Really very pretty. Um, and it also has a uh, ceramic ball as a pants catcher, I guess. Um, really very nice. You know, for G10, it's aesthetic. For, uh, it's beautifully aesthetic with just G10 because it's all white. Uh, there's not that very many white materials out there. So, I mean, G10 is the easiest thing you can get. That uh, You can probably color it up and, you know, make it look just as nice as saying, you know, say like maybe even this knife, if you will. Moving on, uh, we're going to go on to uh, Andre Thorburn. Uh, um, I think this is the L48 or L54. I believe it's the L48 front flipper uh, by Andre Thorburn. I forgot to mention that all the bolster work is done by Andre Thorburn's wife, Marguerite. Uh, he does all the uh, knife grinding. He basically builds the knife uh, completely finished bolsterless. And he hands the knife over to his wife, and she does these designs on them. Um, a lot of them are really elegant. A lot of them are very pretty. Uh, this one kind of reminds me of Liberace, Lee Liberace, the pianist. Uh, a lot of you younger guys don't know who that gentleman is. He was a concert pianist back in the 50s and 60s, and fortunately, uh, he died of AIDS in 1981, I believe. No, yeah. I think somewhere around there, like 81, 82, he died of AIDS. Uh, but yeah, every time I see this knife, I think of Lee Liberace. If he had a knife, he'd probably be carrying this in his pocket. We've got marble carbon fiber on it. And again, the file work all the way up through. The file work is usually done unique each time by hand. Uh, I don't, I, as far as I understand, every time he does file work, he tries to do a different one. For each knife so uh, that separates it and makes it a one-of-a-kind um, the bolsters is zirconium uh, that's what this this bolster is it's zirconium so really very pretty and they do make a fantastic team Andre and Marguerite Thorburn I hope to meet them someday actually I am gonna meet uh, Andre Thorburn in June, he is coming to the Blade Gallery, so I can't wait to meet him, shake his hand, because I own three of his knives, and it's sad I've never met the guy. This is the other L06 front flipper by Erucus Blumeris. Uh, as you can see, they are exactly the same. This one's a one of a kind, this one is not, which is why I'm selling this one. Um, I got this one because it was white, but also I really like the knife. Um... Overall, so when I when I saw this one, this custom, I had to have it. Uh, we've got like these this copper bolster with the line streaks on it, uh, lightning strike carbon fiber, and again a uh, oh god ceramic ball with a silver titanium uh, pocket clip, and even that's got got kind of a nice design on it. Really very nice. Runs on ceramic ball bearings. This is the Willem Steam Camp Swift front flipper in carbon fiber and G10 mixed together in the handle. This is a one of a kind handmade piece. Uh, one of the things I like about this knife is, you know, it's a small knife. That's one thing I like. But the second thing I also like is his ability to crown the knife all the way from the top to bottom. The only other knife maker I know that did that was Chris Reeve. And here I see Willem Steenkamp doing it as well. I love that. Just really fantastic. Moving on, the next one is the John Arnold. Uh, oh, man. Here we go. What's the name of this one? It'll come to me, Simba, Simba Tactical uh, Front Flipper, Small Front Flipper, or I guess Mini Front Flipper, Simba Small Mini Front Flipper, so there you go, in Marble Carbon Fiber Inlays, and uh, I think that's G10, I believe that's, no, I'm not sure what that material, 
carbon fiber, I'm sorry, carbon fiber and um, marble carbon fiber inlays. So carbon fiber and marble carbon fiber inlays, excuse me, with the blue titanium pocket clip and um, a stainless steel backspacer. Uh, that's nothing special. I forgot to mention the, the backspacers on the Rukus Blue Maris knives is um, M390. <laughs> On both this one and the white one, M390. This guy is able to make a backspacer out of anything. Uh, that's another thing that Blue Rogers Blue Maris does. You'll find that on a lot of his knives, the uh, he'll he'll make an interesting choice for the backspacer. I always thought that was kind of funny. Uh, moving on, this one is uh, by uh, J.B. Van Deventer. Once again, we've got white Westinghouse handles uh, with a lightning strike. Uh, carbon fiber uh, inlay with copper on the inside of the knife. Really very, very nice. This knife actually runs on washers only. Really great piece. Uh, we've got a carbon fiber back spacer. Titanium back again, the half and half concept. White Westinghouse, uh, lightning strike marble carbon, carbon fiber for the show side, and then titanium for the uh, for the back side. Really nice knife. I love it. I've carried this one quite often. I've actually used it as well. It doesn't only runs on washers. Really very nice. The next one is by um, <coughs> Willem Steenkamp once again. This one is called the Raider Flipper by Willem Steenkamp. We've got a uh, white back carbon fiber, I'm going to say, and um, yeah, lightning strike carbon fiber for the handles uh, together. Uh, and then we've got a nice pivot. This one kind of reminds me of like a Western cowboy knife look. You know, you've seen those cowboys. They've got like the white hat, the white pants, and the white shirt, you know, with maybe that necklace, black necklace hanging down. I can see them carrying this little guy in their pocket, sort of like a show Hollywood type knife, really very pretty. We've got a silver titanium pocket clip. I love this knife. Runs on ceramic ball bearings uh, and a carbon fiber backspacer. This one is one of um, Trevor Berger's most popular models, the EXK. This one is in stonewashed uh, M390 blade with carbon fiber twill um, bolsters and lightning strike carbon fiber uh, for the handles with a blue pocket clip. Really fantastic knife. It is wicked fall shut smooth. I love it. I've carried this quite often. I've actually used this quite a bit. You can't even tell because the blade is in stone wash. So I love that. Here we've got another Willem Steen Camp. You'll see Willem Steen Camp pop up in my collection quite a lot. Uh, just because his knives are just so elegant using few materials. Here we have all black marble carbon fiber, which is so stunning. And we've got the purple uh, liners with a black titanium backspacer and black titanium pocket clip to match. The blade is M390. The blade is M390 on this one as well. I forgot to mention that. Sorry. And the final knife in my collection. Uh, this is sort of a sad story. This was supposed to be a part of a project uh, of holiday knives. This is my um, 4th of July knife made by uh, J.D. Ellis. Um, this is a truly a one-of-a-kind and a great piece. I'm really happy to have this only one uh, slip joint in my collection. He had a really hard time making the stars on the knife. Um, he was telling me it took him like three or four tries before he could get the stars down correctly. Uh, we've got these stripes going through it. Um, the material on the handle is, I, I don't know what the material is, I have to ask them, I'm not even sure. Uh, we've got a, um, titanium backspacer on it. This is a, again, it's a slip joint. So, uh, if you're not familiar with slip joints, this is called the half stop. And, you know, that's what, it opens and closes. There's no locking in it. It's just got a very strong back um you know 
And you can actually close it safely like that. It's not going to fall and slam on your hand. Uh, slip joints are the oldest type of knife ever made uh, in South Africa. They actually use the back of the handle for the knife to skin sheep, believe it or not. Um, so when he made this one, and the blade is in Damascus, when he made this one for me, my intention was to get uh, all these holiday knives. I was going to have one for 4th of July, one for Thanksgiving from Tin of Stone, one from Tease Meds for Christmas, and another one from, oh God, I can't even think of the, the, other, the fourth South African slip joint maker. It escapes my mind. But he was going to make me the... Um, the New Year's knife, and unfortunately, this is the only knife that came in that came in fruition. I was actually going to try and purchase a special box to put all four in. Um, you know, it was a, it was a really great idea. I still might do it, uh, but at this time, you know, this hobby just takes you everywhere, and you know, I can't I can't promise that I will continue. But I, I actually do want to do that. I want to continue on with the holiday knives project. I may contact all four knife makers again and say, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, it's just a matter of when. But right now I'm so into having this knife collection grow and be what I want it to be. So there you have it. All of my South African knives as they are right now. Um, I believe I have... Oh, God, I think it's 38, 38 customs, almost close to 40 now, um, by various South African knife makers. It has been so much fun owning this collection, um, and I'm getting a lot of uh, hits on my channel. I'm getting a lot of um, experience showing these knives off, learning about the materials and what they are. I'm also making very good friends with Clyde Chalamar, Arugas Plumeras. Uh, Andre Thorburn, you know, I've, you know, I've spoken to them so often on Instagram, um, you know, they're always interested to know how I'm doing with my collection, and, you know, they want to keep in touch with me, and obviously, you know, I'm going to have to make me another knife every time I talk to them, so, there you have it, my entire South African knife collection for your viewing, if you have any questions or any comments, Please comment on my channel. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you have any questions or anything you want to ask me about uh, how I got started in this, please feel free. I'm happy to answer any question you may have. Um, that's it. So there you go. I'll be doing this video every so often when I feel that the collection is changing and evolving. So I'll see you guys all in the next video. And the next video is going to be tomorrow. It'll be another discussion video. So I will see you guys tomorrow with my next video. Thanks so much and have a great evening.